All right, before we get started, fair warning, I'm gonna say either a lot in this talk. If you've ever tried to say either a hundred times, it starts to get really hard real fast. Um, so if I trip up a bunch, bear with me. Anyways, I'm Julie, I'm a software engineer on the messaging team, at, or the messaging channels team at Twilio. Basically, we make it easy for you to send your SMS or in the case of channels, uh, Facebook, WhatsApp, or line messages from your apps. I've been working in Scala since I joined Twilio about four years ago, and just when I was starting to think that Scala wasn't so bad after all, I started to come across code that heavily used either T's. That brings us to the stock. We'll start with looking at ethers before we jump into either T's. You can't really understand either T's without understanding ethers. Many of the examples in these slides are based on using ethers for error handling. You are in no way limited to do, using them for just that. However, it's a common case, use case and I like to use them for that. So what is an ether? Here are some properties of an ether. An ether can be a left or a right. It will wrap another value. You can get context from the value depending on if it's a left or a right. They are right biased, and we'll talk more about what that means in a couple of slides. They are monads, so you can apply functions such as map, flat map, and fold to them. In this case, I have an either, my either, which can be either a string or an int. The string will be our left, and the int will be our right. We will, if we want to create an either with a value that's an int, such as totally right, and if we want to create one with a int that's one, we simply wrap that in right. If we wanted to do um, the same thing for a string, we would take our string and we would wrap that in left. And this is sort of what is meant by left or right given context to the value. If my either is a right, we know it will be an int, and if my either is a left, we know it will be a string. Um, so let's go back to right the right bias that I mentioned a few slides before. This means that map and any other function such as flat map, fold, etc., only get applied if the either contains values that are right as opposed to left. Occasionally this is referred to as the happy side. Um, I have here a function. It's doing something very important. You can tell because it's called do something important. Um, we're passing in an int to it, and we're getting back an either of a string or an int. Basically, if our integer that we pass in is not zero, we will just wrap that value in a right, and we will return that as our either. Otherwise, we will return a string of you chose wrong. I've got a couple examples here. In both of these examples, our map function is simply adding one to the value. If the value is right, that is. Our first example, we're passing one into do something important, um, which will give us back an either containing a right of one. So we end up with, um, in that first example, a either containing a right of two. The second example, we are passing zero into do something important. This gives us back our string wrapped in the left. In this case, the map function will not run and we will simply have our left. Often we have a situation where you may want to do multiple operations on this value. Here's an example of that using maps. This first example will evaluate, um, oh, first of all, we have a handful of variables, um, first right, second right, and a left. Uh, I bet you can guess which ones return rights and lefts. Um, in this first example, we are using just the first right and the second right, so this will evaluate to a right of three. In this second example, we've introduced the left. Um, nothing past this point will evaluate and we'll just be left with a left, or we'll be left with what a left was, which is you chose wrong. When doing multiple calls, you can chain them in four comprehensions like this as well. If a left pops up, you're going to fail fast and stop evaluating on the value of that either. This makes sense if you think about it, because if you were to get a left, say in this example, you wouldn't, and we're trying to add a bunch of integers together, you wouldn't have an integer to add together in this case. So you'd be unable to carry out that yield. 
You may have already noticed that either lend themselves well to error handling. We've already seen how you you're able to compose multiple ethers together and evaluate them only when you have a right. To use either for error handling, we'll treat left as our error side and right as any successful value. Anytime we encounter a left, we can short circuit our processing and instead handle the error if we choose. Let's take a look at a slightly more substantial example which uses either for hand handling. We have a trait processing error, which we'll use on our left side. Basically, this trait is just going to be any um, error that we want to bubble up to the end user. Maybe someone's using this library, um, and these are the errors they're going to see. Um, the method validate person simply takes in a string um, and returns an either of this processing error or a string. If they pass in a null or an empty string, sorry, um, we will return a system error wrapped in a left. Um, that's an invalid state, so you get an error state or an error back. If they pass in a name that is John Doe, we will also treat this as an error, a person does not exist error, also wrapped in a left. And lastly, anything else that they um, that they pass in for name, we will treat as valid and return this as a right. Here, so this is an example of it actually being used. In this case, we're passing in two valid names. So we're just gonna end up with our um, array of a list containing both of these names. This is very similar to what we saw a couple slides ago. If we um, now pass in an invalid name, an empty string, um, this will return a left, so we'll just, we won't, we'll stop processing, and we'll end up with our left of system error. But realistically, it's not that simple. Nothing's that simple. Real life has microservices and networks. Real life has network issues or database issues, whatever it might be. So you knew futures were gonna show up somewhere. You're gonna end up with these, I'm sorry, there's really no way around it. Let's all take a moment and accept this. Okay, back to the slides. So here we have our future real life. It's a future of an either, a processing error, of int. If we try to, if, if we wanted to um, use the int value in this, we have to do a double impact. The first map, gets us our either, and then we map on that to get our right value. It, oops, and we get our right value. It already isn't very nice, but don't worry, it gets worse. So in this case, we again have a future of our either of our error types. Um, and we have this example here. Um, we're gonna do a check on a number and then use the results of that check to do a check on another number. Ignoring the fact that I'm checking the same number twice, this is a pretty realistic situation you might end up in where you're using the result of one check to do an, some other check. Um, let's take a look at the return type this would give you. Yeah. Um, this example isn't ne even nearly as ugly as the first example I had up here, but that one, I, I couldn't leave that one up. It just looked too bad. So there has to be a better way, and there is. We have either T's. So these let you combine two wrappers, for example, a future and an either. The either is always present because it's an either T, but the other wrapper can be anything else. Uh, you could use lists, I'm using futures. Um, it's part of the cats library, and it's also part of the Scala Z library. So here we have my either t. Um, it's an either t where the wrapper is a future, our left is a string, and our right is an int. Looks fairly similar to what we've been seeing before. And we can unpack this. So if we were to do my either t dot value, we actually get back that same um, type we'd been seeing before: future of an either of a string of an int. Um, this also shows how you could create that. It's really just you take your future of your right and wrap that in either T. So that example from a few slides ago that was a future of an either of a 
right of another future of another right or whatever it was that would have been really not that useful for us. This example is probably what we were trying to achieve there. We're using, we're doing a check, we're using the results of that check to do another check and we're yielding the value. However, this gives us something that is much easier to read. We just sort of end up with an either T of a future of all the errors of int. And um, it gives us something that's actually kind of useful to use. All right, now we know what an either T is and why we may want to use it. So let's take a look at some more practical examples. The next few slides will go over some of these and some different functions that may come in handy if you're using either T's. So first, um, I'm going to be referring to this a little bit, so let's talk about our error hierarchy. Now that you're writing complex programs and you have more error types that you have to convey, um, you might have network errors or system errors or user errors. Um, this is what we're going to base it on. Um, here we have a couple of different sealed traits. Internal error and processing error are two separate traits. Um, and then these have some other case classes or objects extending them. Internal error we're going to use for things such as like network error, database errors, anything that we don't want to expose to the end user. Processing error are errors that we don't mind um, if this was a library, we would pass it to the user and allow them to act on them as needed. In many cases, you might be using some Java libraries or other libraries, which throw exceptions. In order to keep your, those out of my code, I like pushing the either creation as far as I can to the edge. What I mean by this, so say I had a function, it's get person from database, and say it was querying a database. Um, this is very likely returning a future of just a future dot successful of say a string. So what I'll do here is um, I'll, once you get your query result back, I'll map over that. If it's a write, I create a, my either of that value as a write, otherwise, um, you can see there is a few errors. I'm choosing just to handle one and then everything else becomes a general exception. But depending on the error type, the SQL exceptions, for example, I say is a database error. Um, like I said, this allows me to keep the rest of my code fairly clean and I don't need to worry about handling uh, exceptions that other people might be throwing anywhere else. So now some functions. The other map, aka the left map. Just like you converted an exception into an either, sometimes you have to convert an either from one type to another. So for example, we have here an either T that has a left of an internal error. Maybe I want that left to be a processing error. You know about map already, but you can use left map to change the left side. Um, this might be if you're moving um, from one part of your program to another part of your program, which uses a different error scheme. Um, basically, this just lets you uh, map over that left side and um, process it or change it from one type to another. Ensuring. Uh, sometimes you may want to verify your right value meets a specific um, condition. An example of this is if you wanted to fail fast if someone did not have any hobbies. We did a lookup on a person, we got that person back, but maybe there's just, they just don't have any hobbies listed. You can use an ensure function to check that hobbies isn't empty. If, for example, it was empty, in this case, we would change um, our error type. This would have been, uh, we, were, we would have had another processing error, or we wouldn't have had a processing error, we would have had a right, sorry. So we would now have um, a either that was a left and a left of everyone has a hobby error. And then lastly, we have folding. The only way, we all know the only way to get rid of your future is to block on it. You don't really want to do that, but that's another discussion. You can, however, get rid of your either T by handling both cases and consolidating into one type. In this example, maybe I'm okay that if we had an error that we just return a count of zero for how many hobbies a person had. Um, so that's what this is doing. If there's an error, if we had a left, sorry, or an error, I'll just return zero, a future 
that contain zero. Otherwise, we'll count how many hobbies they had. So either T's aren't the only monad transformer that exists. There are other, there's also option T's, writer T's, and some other ones, which once you understand one, these all sort of become a lot easier to use. You're also not limited to using either's for error handling. However, it's a great way to express errors in functional programming. Either T's are simply a way um, to make working with either's and other structures, such as futures, a little bit easier. All right, that's it for the talk. Um, if you have any questions, I'll be somewhere around after.